Hey everyone, welcome to another review. So this is probably one of my favorite franchises going today and so we're going to talk about it. Their latest movie, this is the fifth movie in the series, so let's talk about The Forever Purge. Okay, like I said, this is the fifth movie in the series. If you don't know if you like this series or not, or are gonna like this movie, something's wrong with you. There's been five, there's been four movies before this, and two seasons of a TV show on U the USA Network. This is more or less the same, but like every other Purge movie, it takes it in a different direction. It handles a, the topic a little bit differently. It also has different characters. Other than the Frank Grillo character from Election Year and Anarchy, everyone else has been kind of interchangeable because it's more about the, the concept of The Purge. The Purge, if, in case you don't know, like I said, after four movies, two seasons on TV, is where you're given 24 hours, or you're given 12 hours from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m to do almost anything you want and you encourage to kill other people and in those 12 hours you have the right to shoot people kill people do whatever you want there are certain things that are not allowed like you're not allowed to use weapons above class a which kind of means you can't use nuclear bombs you can you can use rocket launchers though you can use handguns machine guns ak-47 shotguns anything like that but kind of plastic explosives and bombs you really can't use. Molotov cocktails are allowed though. These movies can be summed up in the way that um, Purge 1 was Strangers because it was a home invasion movie. Purge 2, Anarchy, is easily the best of the series and can be described as the best Punisher movie on, ever. 3, Election Year, can kind of be described as kind of something like White House Down where it's about a person saving the president, but also these other implications. Um, the fourth purge, which is called the first purge, which is um, basically die hard in, in the projects. And then this one, um, the forever purge, I can probably describe it as Mad Max Fury Road. This is a movie that I, once again, if you don't, like these movies you're not gonna like this one um if you do like these movies you're gonna have a lot of fun and if you like satire which is i think uh, what a lot of critics don't understand about these movies it is a lot of fun this movie boils down to we have two characters adele and, and um luis who come to who go from mexico to america illegally and they work on in Texas they do their job and whatnot and this is their first purge meanwhile we have this other family we have this other family the Tucker family and who's the lead character there is Dylan Dylan Tucker played by Josh Thomas and um, he it's basically their uh, cattle ranchers and um, these are all characters who are in this universe and what happens is, at the beginning of the movie, we set up the purge, the purge happens, but most of the movie actually takes place after the purge. Because what what's going on is a, a segment of the, uh, a large segment of the United States decided, you know what, I don't like what's going on, I want to keep purging, I don't want to keep it condoned to this just 12 hour period. I want to keep going and I want to go for radically different different ideas and the whole movie is these characters having to run from Texas to Mexico for sanctuary so it's kind of a reverse of a lot of the political problems that unfortunately Donald Trump's shining the light on where instead of people trying to you know go to the US to save themselves we're going the other way and yes they do throw in a, a mention that um, the Canadian border is also open 
So depending on where you are, and of course, since this story takes place in Mexico, I mean Texas, <clears throat> the characters are going to want to go to Mexico. It's closer to people. Geography. And this movie, I find it very interesting. Like all these movies, they do shine a light on a certain problem. One of the things I like about the Purge movies is the fact that they never really take a stance. Like there's really no message. They're just saying this is what could happen using some type of, you know, jumping off point of what's going on recently. Like a, a, the election year came out literally the in 2016 when Donald Trump got elected. So it's political without, but without stating its purpose. And I know a lot of people really dislike that. I like that because it's letting you choose. It's not beating you over the head stating you have to believe this and that. I like the action in this movie. Um, I will say more about that in the bad section. I thought the acting was decent for this these types of movies. None of these movies are going to win anyone an Academy Award. The guy who played Dylan, I really liked his character and that his character never really grew. He was a consistent character and he never... He never wavered from what he wanted. Also, I like the fact that they didn't picture him as a, not necessarily a racist because he's a white guy who has um, Jose as his, and he kind of dislikes him because he is Mexican, but he's not necessarily a racist. He just believes in a certain ideology and they actually explain it in the movie, but, and I like the fact that he never kind of changes his character. He is always, I'm trying not to get into spoilers with this movie. He doesn't really change that much in the movie in all honesty. At the end, his beliefs kind of could have been seen to be changed, but we never had that one moment in the movie where they said, aha, now you're not the same person you were at the beginning. Um, and I kind of, I have a big respect for that. Um, the main characters, Adele, I like the fact that she's the female protagonist in this movie. I like the fact that there's a reason for her to have this knowledge of ammunition and weaponry. Um, I thought she did decently. Yeah, she did one very stupid move that this is technically a horror movie, but the Purge movies have always been action horror. This is, she does one stupid thing and yeah, she paid for it. But I really, I, I thought she was handled really well. She never seemed to overpower the men. She was on the same footing, but she wasn't a damsel in distress. Juan, sorry I messed up his name <laughs> earlier. Um, he's also, I think, well acted, like his character arc. Because he's once a, he's kind of like not into an Ameri America, and plus he has to work with Dylan, who is kind of a jackass, and so is his cohorts with him. And you know he's feeling the fact that he's a Mexican, uh, basically border crosser, and it, it, he kind of adjusts, and he kind of also grows as well as the movie goes along. He kind of has. Um, a little bit more respect for the Tucker family. I will say this for the for a Purge movie, I kind of like the cin cinematography in this movie. And it also helps that they got to explore more since this is a race to cross the border. They got to play around with more shots. There's more aerial shots. There's more landscaping shots. Uh, there's more terrain shot. There's more sweeping shots across the broad vista. There's one scene in particular where they're coming out of um, the first town. I don't think they ever named it. On their way to El Paso, and it's this beautiful shot, and it's a pullout as they're driving towards the camera, and then in the background you see the whole what's going on with the whole purge. I also like the fact that the beginnings of the first purge happen it starts out because of the Tucker family is rich and there's the the people who work for them are just like you know we're tired of you 
you know, making money off our backs and we're still poor while you're, you know, rich. I thought that was kind of interesting. I do kind of hate that it was never mentioned again. And I also want to give a shout out to the villain of the third act. I thought he was really good. I really wish they would have placed him earlier in the movie because he he was, you know, when he started when he came into the movie, it really you had a main protagonist, not just the the whole thing of the purge. Um, let's talk about the bad of the movie. Some of the action can be hard to uh, it's hard to understand where it's going. It's it's a combination of the editing and the fact that there they the darkness. I will say this: the action is shot really is kind of shot competently, and it's kind of well done. But there are these moments, especially coming at the beginning of the at, yeah at the beginning of the third act where people are shooting each other and it's so dark and you can't see who's what and it's cutting between all these different people so you can't tell who's the army who are the bad guys who are the good guys um the one good thing is that they dr did dress the good guys in um a specific manner so you could tell them in the dark but a lot of some of the the action in the dark was hard to understand what was going on and who was shooting at who also, I will, I will say this, um, the Tucker family, the daughter, I think she got short change in the movie. I kind of wanted to see her more in this movie. Um, and also, I thought the, a lot of close-ups for like the first 40 minutes and a lot of them really didn't need to be that close to the camera. Um, some, of the, some of the decisions by the director on how to shoot stuff like question, boggled my mind for like the first half of the movie it got better which is kind of weird because I said they they have like great sweeping shots but then there are some there are so many close-ups at the beginning it's like you didn't really need that um some of the in-between of the movie I don't know how to feel about the there's the um a reservation an Indian um talking about throughout the movie talking about how like the purge is bad it's gonna make people wake up more or it's not gonna it's not you know they're eventually gonna go beyond the 12 hours and he was right but like I felt like the way he delivered his dialogue was kind of piss poor but he did make up for it in the third act when he had to be an action person I, I really enjoyed him as the action person not so much as a speaking head there is this this dialogue early on where the the Tucker family the father gives the speech um, when the when his handmen are uh, you know mad at you know f decide to go beyond the purge uh, time limit and they and they have them and he just says this long drawn out speech that was very hand fisted which is kind of amazing because this for for an action movie about people killing each other they do kind of show restraint at times on not being overbearing so that was kind of weird I did like that they I know this is supposed to be the last movie in the franchise but I do like that they actually do leave the door open for a sixth movie if they really want I don't think they'll do it but it's there if you wanted to or they can actually you know have another USA series for one season to get that resolved um this is another good installment in the franchise not the best if you wanted me to rank them I'd probably say Anarchy Election Year this the first purge and then the purge um, so it fits squarely in the middle so I'm gonna give it a 7.8 um, none of the acting is gonna blow you out of the water um, there are fun action scenes it is a nice breezy what an hour and 40 minutes and it is a lot of fun once again if you like the other movies, you're going to like this movie. If you don't like the other movies, why bother? This is the fifth movie in the damn series. I had a lot of fun. This is my second time viewing it. Um, so that's my thoughts for The Forever Purge.